Hello. Hello, hello, and whoa, this is moving still. Hello, and welcome to Oddslon. Uh, as you come to your seats, we're going to get going. Uh, I am Trey. I evidently don't know how to use this mic. It's only been five years, sorry. Um, I am Trey Balchowski, and I'm here to welcome you to Odd Salon and to introduce Ryan. Ryan is our curator for tonight. And Ryan is an exceptionally helpful person, and that is how he came to Odd Salon, is we had a very bad plan our very first year to have flights of cocktails passed through all of the audience members and given to them each. And it was a disaster. And there flew in Ryan to the rescue, passing gracefully cocktail flights through the entire audience, and we fell in love with him. So I would like you to welcome him to the stage for the first time as curator. Please a warm round. Greetings programs. I am Ryan, Ryan Galliato. I am here to curate uh, Odd Salon Prank. Uh, how many people are, what? Get out of here, imposter. <laughs> I am Ryan Galliato. <laughs> and welcome to Prank. <laughs> and welcome to Prank at Odd Salon tonight. Of course, we couldn't let the night go without a few things going, so keep an eye, keep a hand on your hat and chair and seat at all times. We're going to examine pranks, but before we do, wait, we know that one, wrong way, there we go. But before we get started, I cannot see, so I will only be able to know by applause, how many people is, there, is this their first odd salon? I love you all deeply with the bottom of my heart. How many people have been to Odds before? I love you just as much because you are all a very large and lovely audience. And as you can tell, those that are new from those that have been here before, there's a little bit of sound that goes on. This is a ruckus crowd. How do we do things? We do things with a little bit of gusto. But what are we doing tonight? First, we're going to talk about some strange things. Six stories brought to you. Um, we're actually a little bit different because we're going to do a little interview to start off. Three stories, a little cocktail break because we want to make sure you are well embosomed, lubricated. And then we'll come back and have three more stories. And now will be a full odd salon for you. But we want to make sure we can hear you because as I said, from this point, I see nothing. I see nothing. But I want to hear some applause. Let's welcome these people tonight. Give us some applause. It's not a quiet event. This has been a practice. In the event of an actual speaker, you'll need to be louder. Now, regulars, let's get, let's get some help on this one. As we're going through, you don't just sit there and watch an odd salon. You are part of an odd salon. So if something like yeah. come up, very good. Or And tonight's special word is? Media. All right, let's try this again. Tonight's special word is? Media. Media. Third time. <laughs> there we are. So Odd Salon is this wonderful stage, but it's not an exclusive stage. It's a participatory stage. This is a place for us, for you, for all to come and share great, wild, and wonderful stories. We love finding about lost history that we didn't know about the night before. And the best way to do that, if you have one of those stories that go, oh wow, that needs to be on that stage. Oddsalon.com backslash speak. That's a bet, forward slash, sorry. <laughs> I'm staying, it, it's behind me, I, I did it. <laughs> um, We'd love for you to share your stories, because this stage belongs to all of us. Also, you can join our email list to find out about when shows are happening and when and what topics are coming up. So maybe you know, you've got a story that sounds neat, but you're waiting for the best topic for it. Best way to find out. Also, you don't need to put your phones away. You are more than welcome to reach out to the rest of the world and share the wonder tonight. Yeah. What kind of media? 
<laughs> I see we all have opinions tonight, and that's fine. Um, so at Twitter, we are uh, at Odslon. There's also hashtag learn something weird. We love for you to gram and tweet and share everything you have tonight because this really is f sharing knowledge. And finally, you may hear about this conversation going someplace else. This is where we take the conversation after the night is done. That is something weird, a Facebook group where us, the speakers, and everyone else can examine more about pranks. Or maybe something from the last show that's like you just thought of now that the prank made you think about. Anyways, something weird. Now, tonight, very serious subject. Tonight, we are going to talk about and explore pranks. Going back to the first recorded usage in English in the 1590s, it was referred to a large display full of mirth, like the car found mysteriously on the roof of a building in Cambridge University in 1958. It took them about 20 years to figure out how they did it. I'm not telling. <laughs> um, now the pranks, I want to make sure, are, are different than hoaxes or cons, because there's a sense of theater to them. You know, they're, they're large displays, mix in a lot of whimsy, grab some public attention, play with the public expectations, and voila, a prank. Done for its own sake, done for its display, done for fun, not for profit. Maybe, well, and you remember this guy? <laughs> this was part of a prank media campaign <sighs> All right, you guys in <laughs> Medea. <laughs> Part of a prank Medea campaign for, for a cartoon. They were little light boards about this big, placed up all in weird places under bridges, highways, si in, in cities throughout the country, right? Well, Boston didn't react very well. They called out the bomb squad. They called out counterterrorism. They shut down traffic in the city. It was a little bit more than the pranksters intended. So this is a this is a good prank, but it's also a good lesson to think about your prank. So be careful with your pranks and remember to know your audience. Now you might be asking or thinking, why am I curating this particular prank, this particular topic? That is because I love a good prank. Several years ago, I was honored to be part of a group in Chicago that did a wonderful day, a wonderful thing. It was called the Clown Train. We would dress up as a full clown regalia and hit the subway. So imagine you're on your commute and you're sitting there and you look up and a full dressed clown just gets on and sits down. Clown's gotta work, right? You know, it could be a birthday party at the end of that ride. Next stop, another clown. Next stop, another clown. Next stop, another clown. And another clown, and another clown, until finally the car is full of a gaggle of clowns. And we did this just for fun, because we would then get off the train all at the same spot, and we wouldn't talk to each other. We were just commuting clowns. And besides a, a few pedestrians with... Uh, Chlorophobia, if I said that right. Uh, we pulled off a great prank that really didn't harm anyone. So we did it again and again. I think we did three or four successful clown trains. I learned there is nothing more socially powerful in the street than a gaggle of clowns. We stopped traffic. We controlled the police, at least on that block. We took over an art museum. My favorite part? Were the people confused that come up to us? What do you mean you're not promoting anything? <laughs> so tonight, tonight we're going to talk about some great pranks and pranksters. So let us raise this first glass, this first drink, and with words in mind from one of the most famous pranksters in literature, Puck. Please, I want everyone to join me in, in this invocation. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and nothing... 
No more worries than a dream. I lost on that one. Cheers. So I'd like to welcome to the stage this evening, Amy, uh, sorry, Amy Wendelson, Leonard, I, wow, it's funny how you get up here, and, uh, Leonard Peltzen, Daniel Baskin, Aaron Doran, John Law, and a very special guest,